Did you know the one single hugely most important thing that most defines a child's health is their growth pattern. It's their growth pattern. That's it. And this is based on decades and decades of science from all over the globe. What's so incredible, it's so powerful. It's so powerful. If you restore a child's growth pattern, you're going to see a very different child. And this might all sound like, what are you talking about? Because you go to the pediatrician and they think everything's fine. They say it's fine. Well, for kids who have any really any issue at all, the very first thing I do is check out, well, where are they at with their growth pattern? And this really, really, really matters, especially for kids who are struggling, uh, for kids who are uh, on the autism spectrum, have behavioral contact issues, ADHD, learning issues, or any chronic condition, allergies, anything like that. They get sick frequently. Growth pattern, growth pattern, growth pattern. <laughs> and this is so much more than just what's your child's weight for age and what's their height for age which is usually kind of gets checked at the pediatrician's office and no one's really using that information to understand what's going on. I'm going to give you a quick example. Let's do a quick screen share. This is a guy uh, who came to me in my practice who is on the autism spectrum and he had seen everyone. He'd been to many people. He's a 10 year old boy astonishing to me this happens a lot this is hard it happens a lot that nobody picked this up so let's take a look at the tool that i use for every new little kiddo that i meet so this is a tool called a pediatric growth reference chart tool um it's going to take the weight for age height for age and body mass index for age and kind of juxtapose them for me and give me something called z-scores which will show me how many standard deviations away from the norm, so to speak, that I would that this child is in their growth pattern. And sure enough, we have this 10-year-old boy, um, only weighs 52 pounds. If that doesn't sound right, it good, it shouldn't, you're you're on it. <laughs> that is not healthy. Sure enough, when you plot it just for his weight for his age, it's barely at the first percentile. You can see that over here. Um, that alone is a flag. That's a flag. Your provider team should be investigating that right there. Next, when we look at his height, he's only, I think, 54 inches tall. He is uh, barely around the fifth percentile over here, his height for his age. Now, how do we know this isn't right for this guy? We know because we look at what did he weigh when he was born? What was his length when he was born? What are those parameters? And how tall are his parents? And what would we project and expect? You can do that, that there are rubrics for that. Then the other thing I look at is, well, I look at his food diary and I actually quantify it. And I see, well, what total amount of food is he even eating? And you can juxtapose all these things and figure out what the gap is. When we look at his body mass index and put that relative to his weight relative to his height, even though he's stunted, which he is, and stunting is a clinical term, for long-term entrenched malnutrition. Kids don't become stunted typically unless they have been underfed or had a chronic condition for a long time that impaired their growth pattern. This happens after a while. Usually the weight for age drops a little bit first. So he's both underweight and stunted and his body mass index tells me he's also underweight for his height. So even though he's stunted and he's already shorter than he should be, he's too skinny even for that height. So what this means is this child is in clinically that it would fall in the category of moderate malnutrition, which may not sound so bad, but he's quite a ways off his expected growth pattern. And in this circumstance, nothing gets better. His brain can't work. His brain doesn't have the nourishment it needs to function or organize anything. His gut won't heal. Being this underweight in itself will cause leaky gut. I get asked about leaky gut all the time. This alone will cause leaky gut. You can eat all the probiotics you want, all the fermented food you want, the dose of the kombucha, whatever. It's not going to help. You must figure out how this child can be replenished and refed, how to use food to do that. And of course, this is not something a neurologist is going to tell you or an ABA therapist or an occupational therapist, it's not their skill set. This is really important. This is what I do all the time for kids. And you will be amazed. You will be amazed at what a turnaround you will see, not only in the kid's functioning, behavior, sleep, 
they're happier, they're less anxious. And if they have a chronic condition, the condition can start to get better typically when a growth pattern is intact. And I can't say it enough, growth is literally the single most powerful, powerful indicator and driver of a child's overall health and well-being, how often they get sick, how sick they get, what kind of mood they have. It's so important. So don't overlook it. If you need help with it, I'd love to hear from you.